there's a famous sort of interview. Uh, Mark Rothko was asked, this is, you know, decades ago, right? When there were press conferences for, for artists, <laughs> as, if there, as if that would ever happen today. And of course, his, his work, his mature work are two and three colors. It's not just two and three colors, it's many colors, there are transparencies and different things going on. But someone asked him, how long did it take you to do that? And of course, the, you know, the inside joke there is, you know, it should take a long time. Well, his answer was, well, I'm 56 years old. It took me 56 years to be able to make this painting. And that's how I kind of feel about this in that a lot of my work is, looks simple. Um, where two things touch, they come together. Uh, where there's a certain tension, where there's um, something that just flows and it looks simple. It, it's taken me a long time to be able to make it look simple. No one's telling me to make any of this stuff. I mean, it's just like, here I am, a grown man in the studio by myself playing with paints because I want to. It's, the, it's kind of a weird, you know, ambition when you think about it. But um, I, I think, you know, I think it's worth doing. And I think that my work deals with space, real space. There's a sort of uh, flatness to some of this. There's a sort of three-dimensional illusion to some of the work. There's a lot of push and pull with colors and line. And so I'm, I'm interested in real space, even though it's abstract. I'd come home and I would draw after school, probably not do my homework and draw instead. So I wasn't that great of a student, but I was passionate about what I was passionate about. And I never really worried about it. Um, I knew I would figure it out as I went along. And that's kind of what it is now, too. I mean, art schools, they just release these kids after untold hours of studying and building and making. And they have to all figure it out. And that's just the way it is. And um, most people stop in their 30s and uh, and I stopped for a little while um, and I came back to it we came back here in 06 and I started painting again and um, started showing soon thereafter it wasn't that easy but uh, it's sort of like riding a bike if you're really if you were really into something and doing it in a, in a serious way it comes back you know all of this and every artist and every art student all it really is is finding your voice and that's not an easy thing to do. Really finding your own voice is, is key to everything. And that's, that's what takes time. You know, like making a painting oftentimes for me doesn't take that long. But I, the one thing I, I, I aim for is finding that certain voice in, in the work that's mine. When I was in um, high school, a couple of friends and I would go see uh, live jazz. Seeing someone play live and improvising with three or four of the people and it works. They're sort of tying into and, key, and keying into their own sensibilities and, uh, and listening at the same time, shutting off listening and playing. It's, it's a lot like painting, I think, uh, because uh, colors have a certain pitch. You know, the direction of a line has a certain feel to it. I started to understand what abstraction was, and um, it sort of opened my eyes to it all. And yeah, that was kind of a pivotal thing. looking for subtlety in the line next to something that maybe isn't subtle. That's kind of the challenge, looking for extremes and then looking for things in the middle and how these things all play, play with each other and uh, in a serious way, but also in a, in a way that people can get into it and it's accessible. If it's working, it means it's what I want and I'm always after what I want. And I don't really understand what that is, but when I see it, then I stop. I don't really want to know everything. 
so many people want to know everything about life. I really don't. I really want to feel it and I want to use it, but I don't need to know every single thing. I want it to be certain things to be a mystery and that's how I like it. I can honestly tell you that um, I don't necessarily remember much. If I'm really in a zone and I'm working and things are clicking and working, I don't really remember why I'm making decisions. In other words, thinking for me oftentimes ruins a session of painting. I mean, I'm at the point in my life, in my career, in my sort of whatever uh, abilities that um, I, I trust that there's something there, but I don't necessarily remember uh, why I make decisions. I, I, they come and go. I mean, I, I have torn up many paintings that just don't work. And, it, and sometimes you, you just can't make it. And not every day is a good day in the studio, just not. Do I make mistakes? That's a really funny question. I mostly make mistakes and I depend on making mistakes the whole time because that's when interesting things happen. If you think you're not making mistakes, you should just put it all away and go do something else because it's not, it's not right. You are making mistakes, but it's what you do with those mistakes that matters. This is how you work out your, your life on these paintings and you bring it in with you. If you think you don't, you're, you know, it's just not true. I mean, everybody brings everything with them, but, uh, if you're doing something creative and you're pushing that outside of yourself, I think that's not a bad way to sort of, sort of uh, have it just come through. It's, it's hard and it's painful and oftentimes I just want to stop because it's too hard to come up with another method of working. And, uh, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mystery for sure, I don't know. Creativity and thinking like in a creative way and trusting that you're gonna find something that other people are gonna find interesting, you're really kind of you know, putting yourself out there in a way that is it's not that easy, you know? Very, in a very public way. Again, no one's telling me to do this. And, uh, Anybody who's serious about anything that they want to do, um, you know, no one's going to do it but them. Sometimes I wonder why I'm doing it at all. But then, you know, it, it seems to have a life of its own. And um, it takes a lot of discipline for anybody to do something in a serious way. Think about all the visual images people look at now per day, thousands sometimes. And, you, and, and you're making a visual image. And anything that you make is going to compete with all those things they see all day long. And so you have to find your voice and, um, and really try and connect with something and put it out there. You don't, you know, it might not work. Who knows? So I don't know. I don't know. Even, I still don't know a lot of this stuff. I'm still trying to. Both of my kids just moved to New York and, you know, I think it's great because they're just beginning. It doesn't really matter. You can make them do whatever, but just go and start and see what happens and, and learn from it. And that's sort of what we do in the studio. It's what you do uh, in most things.